I was a civil servant employed in the Inland Revenue at Aberystwyth in the Collector of Taxes Department. And we must have had like a newspaper or some sort of thing. And they were asking for volunteers to go to uh, assist in the resettlement offices. And as Tom ran, I, I was traveling then daily to Aberystwyth. So I applied, you know, a big, massive adjustment to them, wasn't it? For a start, it was freezing cold. You know, they, they were in, all right, they, the huts were quite, they, you know, they were heated and, you know, they had fire um, heaters and everything, but it was still cold when they, you know, told me I can't walking down, if we asked somebody to come in to, to have a word about a job or something like that, and they had to leave a really warm room to battle the winds down to our place, you know. They did it though, but but I should imagine it was very very. It was a big adjustment, wasn't it? Everything, the weather, I should say the food and everything, like you know, different. A lot of them spoke very little English, so it was hard. I think no. for them, I think it was very hard. But the, I think they managed, and you know, they they always were very cheerful. Because they wouldn't have had any coats with them, would they? Oh, they did. Yeah, they they had. You know, the W W R V S, wasn't it? And there, there was there was a big, um, you know, hat where there were lots of clothing had been donated and that sort of thing. You know, and there was a lot of volunteers there. There was an outside catering company that did all the cooking. You know, the the canteen. There was a big canteen there, and that, that that was all outside catering. There was quite a few houses available in the Ronda. I took a family there myself. Their daughter was a nurse, had started nursing at Bronglies. Well, she was nursing there. I don't know if she'd already been there or whether she was, you know, resettled there after coming to Tongvan. I, I can't remember that bit. But we took them, I took them there. We, we had a bus to take them with whatever possessions they had at Tom and I. And um, I thought it was not, you know, I thought it would have been nice for the girl to see where her parents, they were a bit older, to see where they were going to live. So she came with me uh, that day and um, she had the day off from Bronglice and came down to see her parents settled in this house. We had a the family that we that Debbie was uh, met as well. It was a young couple. He was a printer, um, yeah, a printer in Kampala, and um, he secured employment with a printing company in Ipswich. I remember them going there. Um, the family um, that he went to, the the gentleman that gave him the employment. They were very good, you know, they really settled them in and everything. They, they were very good people and really helped them. And those are the two families that really that I do remember more about. You know, it's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we do remember, don't we, that the first Christmas, we did have a Christmas card. But I don't remember what happened afterwards, you know. I don't think uh, we ever... But, you know, had any contact with them after that. 1972, I would have been four then. I remember going um, with mum and my grandmother, my nine. We went for tea with this family, the, the family that moved to Ipswich. And it's something that I've, I've never forgotten it because um, I just remember, I don't remember the rest of the camp, but I remember going into their as for their room but I mean I can still picture it now it was almost like um a prison cell really of what I'd seen on the television you know the program porridge um <laughs> just the you know concrete walls a little window and then the bunk beds and the the man that that was sitting on a chair in front of us and then a husband was standing to me as you know a little child then it just struck me that the the concrete surroundings, but these almost majestic people standing in front of me, 
they were their, their dress and everything. I'd never seen anything like it. I was really in awe. And then um, they'd got like, I, I don't know whether it was a crate. Yeah, upside down. It, upside down, down crate. crate for a table. Uh, as a table and this beautiful cloth over it. And then we were having tea. Well, I'd never seen anybody having tea without milk in it for a start. So that was like, <laughs> you know, a big thing. And then le- slices of lemon in a in a little dish. You know, it was all like completely new to me. It was such an experience. And then the two little girls, Cuckoo and Alpa, who I suppose were about my age, weren't they? Mm, mm. Um, we were kind of sitting around this crate and I just remember... Well, I suppose there wouldn't have been a conversation, but I can just remember us being giggling and me drinking this tea with no handles on the cup. It was just like a little bowl. Yeah. And then um, my my nine, my grandmother, she'd been given a chair, um, but it was just kind of, um, I just remember that the concrete and their like, their presence there was just so, so nice. And I, I've always remembered them. They were always very grateful of, you know, um, whatever was available, really. Well, they were always, they'd come and chat with us and in the office and that sort of thing. You know, they were, uh, and they liked mixing with us. You know, the, 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 this young chap from Swansea, he, um, he was staying in the camp. And he used to meet up with the younger uh, chaps in the evening. He, they'd bake him a curry and that sort of thing, you know. They they all mixed in. I remember we, I was invited one night for the curry. <laughs> it was very nice, but <laughs> no, we didn't have that a lot in Tawin then. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit of an eye opener, but <laughs> but it was it was nice, and they, they they did feel that they were welcomed, you know. And of course, um, I stayed there until the camp closed. And then I went to RAF Gaiden with the rest of the families that were left. I'd stayed there until that closed. And then I was offered to go to London, but I didn't want, as it, there was only little. So I was traveling backwards and forwards at weekends. I think everybody was a bit surprised that it did close, but it was because of the location really, not because it, that it wasn't run efficiently. I think it was really everybody seemed to be very happy and there were a lot, lot of volunteers there. Cuckoo and Alpha <coughs> and you know I've often wondered you know what what they did you know if they remembered me you know and it, it was it was a special occasion for us because you know we we didn't have much did we remember we didn't really go places but this was like my my nine had put her best dress on to go <laughs> <laughs> probably your only dress but you know I knew it was something <laughs> special when nine had this dress on and um you know so it, it was an occasion um and also um you know something a bit different somebody that I was in school with in Towin you know we're all in touch on Facebook and everything last year he was on holiday abroad in Madeira I believe it was last year and had, um, him and his wife had made friends with the people there. And it turned out that one of the ladies had been a child refugee at Tom Van Eycam and has very, very fond memories of being here, which, you know, and it was lovely to, to hear that and, and to actually see, they had the photograph taken together. It was so nice to, you know, because we're all very fond of the area and it would be horrible if somebody turned around to say, oh, it, I hated it there. In my previous career, I, I'd always worked with people um, from different nationalities. And um, I always enjoyed the history of, you know, meeting people like that. I enjoyed talking to people, learning their sort of history, their way of life and that sort of thing. Um, so I, you know, I just went, when I finished in RAF Gaiden, I went back to, you know, um, being in the, the revenue. And then I transferred after 10 years. I 
went to the post office and that's what we Deborah and I I still do now <laughs> we, we had the post office in Tarwin I, I retired five years ago so um I don't know I I suppose whether it did influence me, I don't know. But I enjoyed my time there. My daughter, as it happened with her uni university friends, just as things were kind of heating up with the um, people coming out of Ukraine, her and her friends had gone to Krakow for the weekend. Where the flat where they were staying um, had already got refugees in the bottom. In the, in the basement and Maisie said to me, Mum, she said they were obviously affluent people, but they didn't have anything. And I thought, well, that's how I remember when the time that I'd gone to Tom Van Eyck, that, you know, yeah. it's, it's the same that these people who look so grand were in this concrete room. They, they'd had, yeah. you know, they had to give up so much and then, you know, and they were so, well, the, the majority of them, the, most of them were really well educated and had had, you know, fantastic positions in, in Uganda. And they were, they had nothing, you know, it was yeah. quite traumatic, wasn't it?